Hello, everybody. Welcome. I'm John Gallagher from Learning Herbs, and welcome to Herb Mentor Live. It is Wednesday, May 26th. It's great to see you all here today. We have Rosalie with us in just a moment. I'd love if you could uh, put in the chat there, whether you're watching on YouTube or you're watching on Facebook, put in the chat there, say, hey, where are you from? And um, mind you that if you're on Facebook, use the, the, the comment or chat thing that, that's right by the, um, this video and not like the uh, I am stuff or the other chat stuff or whatever. Just use the where this video is and then I'll actually see the comments that are coming in and questions and things like that as we go along. Um, so... If you're new to Learning Herbs, your first time here Learning Herbs, we've been around since 2005, and we have been teaching people about herbs and home remedies since then. Started with my family, with myself and my wife, Kimberly, and about a year or two after that, Rosalie uh, joined us, and we all started Herb Mentor together, and uh, Herb Mentor is probably why you're here. Maybe you're a new member. We have a lot of new members with us this week because we had that Rosemary Gladstar um, webinar last week, and lots of folks joined us from that. And so welcome. And so Rosalie and I get together every once in a while and we do an Herbenture Live. You never know when it's going to be, but it's going to be at some point. We, we love doing them. So we, we love just kind of, you know, every month or two or two, two months or something like that, we'll get on. So uh, if you don't know Rosalie de la Foe, she is a wonderful herbalist. Sort of, uh, she's a professional member of the American Herbalist Guild. She is author of two best-selling books, um, that Alchemy of Herbs, as well as co-author of Wild Remedies. And um, she is big part of Herb Mentor. And uh, I am going to welcome her here right now. And Rosalie, how are you doing? Hey, John. Hi, everyone. Happy to be here. <laughs> it's great to be I here. I have to we say, John, you pronounced my last name really well this time. I know I that it's been a challenge for you. <laughs> so yeah, it's often done with kind of like a, a Spanish accent. Like, and this time you're getting really, you're getting a lot closer to the French accent. So it's very impressive. <laughs> Thank you. I, I, and uh, you know, I've been taking French lessons. So, yeah. Yeah. But, wow. oh, oh, thanks for that compliment. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. Look at all thanks these for folks. Your hard are, work. I, I know. I know. I know. I know. You know. Yeah, eventually, look at all these people. I know. We got uh, Sandra from Ontario. Oh, Angela's here. Hey, Angela Raheem. Uh, Tamar Hi, from Hardwick, Massachusetts. Rosalie, and then we got Millie and. And uh, oh, getting a little feedback there, so I'm going to lower that my speaker a little bit. And um, yeah, it's great it's to great see to everybody see come on. And I'm getting myself having a little audio feedback there, but maybe that'll go away. Sometimes that just happens when we're starting out. So mm -hmm. we're going to learn about nettles today. Yes, Chris, and hello, Lisa. Great to see everybody. So um, Rosalie. You know, we get on here and we've been doing this uh, for, gosh, Herb Mentor for 13 years or something like that. 13, 14 years. Yeah, 14, I think. It's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. I guess and it'll be so, 14 this fall because we started wow. in like October, right? October. That is November. when it started. Gosh, yeah. that, that long ago. <laughs> That's incredible. And I'm just like really psyched that so many folks are for joined on Herb Mentor with us. Um, and, um, and you know, we also have a forum on Herb Mentor where people can ask questions. And um, if you, so if you're, if you're uh, asking questions today and somehow uh, the question gets lost or we don't get to it, um, you can always go on the forum and, and uh, ask your question there too. And then people will answer. Even Rosalie pops in there from time to time. So, um, all right. So let's see, well, how should we do, what should we do? What do you want, what do you want to do, Rosalie? <laughs> Well, um, I am, I guess I just want to say again, I'm so happy to see um, all these wonderful folks here. It's fun to see new names, people I've seen here before. So that's really fun. And today I have a presentation on nettles that I'm super excited for. And, you know, John, when you're talking about, you know, Herb Mentor and Learning Herbs being so old and stuff, and I think about like, wow, it's been a lot of years I've been sharing about nettles. But I feel like I learn more about nettles all the time. And each, you know, each season that nettles comes or every cup of tea or every time I eat them, there's so much more to learn. So it's just, that's the thing about herbs, right? It's this never ending spiral. So I get yeah. to share about the same things, my same, you know, favorite things, but every year it's just a little bit different for me. And there, and there is no such thing as, um, 
you know, beginners, intermediates, experts, we're all just learning what we need to learn on this journey. And every cycle that goes around, we learn a little more. Um, and not so much about like, you know, I'm becoming an expert in this or whatever. It's right. just about enriching our lives with. Right. Plan. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So I know there's some questions coming in and we'll get to questions. We can, well, we could, you know, I don't know, we could answer a question or two now, or we could get right to nettles, whatever you want to do. Yeah, let's, let's jump into nettles so I can share okay. what I have to share and then we can get to questions afterwards. Okay. So let me, give me a moment. I'm going to push all the buttons here. <laughs> Okay. Right. How does that look? That looks great. Okay. Let me get my little further set up here, my cup of tea, you know, all, everything. <laughs> all right. Well, I am, as I mentioned, so excited to share about nettles today. I've actually been knee deep in nettles these past few weeks. Um, that's literally because the nettle, nettle season is on right now. And so I've been visiting my local nettle patches and harvesting lots of nettles because as I mentioned, it's one of my favorite herbs. And not only is it delicious, it's packed with nutrients. And that's something that is especially important today. And here's why. Many of our modern day fruits and veggies are actually missing nutrients. Sometimes it's because we bred those nutrients out while making things sweeter and tastier. So for example, apples used to be smaller and more bitter. Same with tomatoes, smaller, and more bitter. We've bred both of those to be bigger and tastier. Sometimes they were lost as this unintentional consequence of monoculture and having nutrient depleted soils, right? If those nutrients aren't in the soils, they can't be in our foods. But in any case, our foods don't contain the vitamins, minerals, and phytonutrients that they once did. But the good news is that eating nettle is a powerful way to replace those nutrients naturally. John, I'm getting a little bit of feedback. Is that okay? Uh, you know what I'll do if you are getting a little feedback is I'll just uh, I'll mute my mic. Maybe that'll help. Okay. All right. So nettles are native to Africa, Asia, Europe, and North America. And nettle grows all over the Northern Hemisphere. And wherever it stands, humans take notice. That's because the plant is covered in these tiny hairs or trichomes that are like hollow needles. And when you casually brush up against the leaves or the stems, it releases this slew of irritating chemicals into the surface of your skin which results in a mild but can be uncomfortable rash. And people react differently to this rash. So some people have mild reaction. Some people have a big reaction. Also, the nettles themselves can have different levels of sting. So I've actually seen stingless stinging nettle and, you know, nettle that was super stingy and nettle that didn't have a mild sting. So that can be an, um, a variation as well. And who knows how? But many tens of thousands of years ago, our ancestors figured out how to cook or dry the leaves so that they could avoid the sting. And ever since, we've been enjoying the many gifts of nettles. This plant really embodies food as medicine. Nettles' many gifts are often attributed to its wide-ranging nutrients. And most people could benefit from all of those nutrients. But nettle isn't for everyone especially when you're first drinking it as a tea or eating it in meals, it can be a strong diuretic. But this diuretic effect can lessen over time. So what I mean by that is you drink the tea and then you visit the loo many, many times, right? It's very, it just makes you pee all the time. But because, and, and because of this, nettle is very drying in nature. So those who tend to be already dry, so you have dry hair, dry skin, and then you start drinking nettles, it makes you more dry, then you can really experience this unwelcome increase of dry symptoms. Sometimes you can add moistening herbs like mallow, marshmallow, violets, those moistening herbs, you can add those to nettle formulations and that can help offset the drying quality. But sometimes nettle is simply too drying. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind. Nettle is also cooling in nature. Uh, so for people who tend to be warm and damp, nettle is nourishing and a building plant. 
uh, that can really help benefit those folks especially. But because nettle is so nutrient dense and has so many goodies, I recommend that everyone give nettle a try and see how you do with it. So I wouldn't say no to it before you've tried it, in other words. And as I mentioned, it can be a strong diuretic, but oftentimes that decreases over time. It's the same thing with coffee. When people first start drinking coffee, it can be super diuretic. And then after a bit, it releases its diuretic properties. So I keep talking about nettle being high in nutrients. And so let's list out some of what those are. It's calcium, they're very high in fiber. They're believed to be the highest plant-based source of protein and on and on. Um, I mentioned calcium, also magnesium. So lots of great things going on in there. And a few plants really boast the nutrient contents of nettles. Um, so that's, you know, it makes these really, really special and their health benefits can be super dramatic because of that. Eating nettle or drinking its strong tea regularly often results in healthier bones, stronger teeth, more vibrant hair. Nettle can also improve skin health and is frequently used to reduce eczema and acne. Time and time again, I've heard from people who start drinking strong nettle teas daily and they're just amazed at how much better they feel overall. Their minds are sharper, their energy is higher, and their energy is sustained all day long. So a good candidate for nettles is someone who wants to do more, but they don't have the energy to do much. Another powerful benefit of nettle is its ability to modulate inflammation, which can be beneficial in a variety of ways. One is for seasonal allergy sufferers, they can find relief from their symptoms by drinking a strong nettle tea starting a couple of months before allergy season starts. And by starting to drink that nettle for you know, a long time before the season hits, you can often just miss your normal seasonal allergy uh, season or have a much reduced symptoms. You can also use freeze-dried nettle. Um, freeze-dried nettle is a specially prepared form of nettle it's not something you can do at home, it's something you buy. And that can be taken for the immediate relief of acute seasonal allergy symptoms. So nettle is great for reducing inflammation, especially as it relates to seasonal allergies. Several studies have shown that a fresh alcohol extract of nettle leaves can reduce inflammation and blood glucose levels in people with type two diabetes and insulin resistance. And a recent study showed that nettle may decrease risk factors of cardiovascular incidence and other complications in patients with diabetes mellitus. So I'm on the screen there is just some examples of all of these studies that are done looking at nettle and how it can benefit people with type two diabetes. Most of these studies are using fresh nettle extract. And so using the fresh nettle herb and extracting it into alcohol. Nettle can also reduce pain associated with inflammation. Some of its nutrients like magnesium can help relieve musculoskeletal pain. Researchers have shown that a combination of nettle, rose hips, and devil's claw was effective at addressing knee pain. And I was mentioning earlier about the sting from stinging nettles. Well, even that uncomfortable sting can uh, be part of its medicine. Uh, and that might sound a little bit strange, but urtication, which is the practice of um, purposefully brushing against nettles in order to get that irritation or rash or sting from nettles is really great for reducing chronic inflammation like arthritis. And there's actually, so that's a very old like folk time use. And what my first teacher, Karen Sherwood, shared this use with me and she said that when she went to Germany many decades ago, she was in this small village and she noticed a group of women elders heading off together and she asked if she could go, she went with them and they were headed to the nettle patch where they like were stinging themselves with nettles to help keep their hands, um, you know, reduce the pain in their hands due to arthritis. So a few years ago, I was in a nettle patch and I was having some trouble uh, with my neck. It just kept going out. And I was in a lot of pain and I was in a nettle patch. I was with a friend and I was like, you know, I'm going to try out this like topical nettle situation because I want to see how it is. And so I asked my friend, you know, cut off some nettle and then kind of just like lightly brush them, that nettle where I was having pain. And it was amazing how quickly it helped. So 
Um, so it helped me. And then I, it's just so fascinating to me that we have like these studies that I've done, like where people, you know, signed up for a study where they were going to get stung with nettle. <laughs> I just think that's like kind of a funny thing to opt in for. Um, but the studies showed that nettle sting helps for chronic knee pain and helps for the treatment of like base of thumb pain as well. So great benefits there if you're willing to go for it. <laughs> And so nettle, we've been talking mostly about nettle leaves, but herbalists often reach for nettle root to support prostate health and to alleviate the symptoms of BPH. And it's often combined with sol palmetto for this. And in one study using nettle root and sol palmetto, researchers concluded that the herbs were more effective and safer than the conventional drugs that were prescribed for BPH. Go herbs. So nettle loves damp, nutrient-rich soils, and it can spread to form these dense colonies. And it has erect, occasionally branch stems that are covered with these hairs that are somewhat, um, well, the, the I want to say the stems are somewhat, um, what are you, I'm just losing that thought of in my, it's like the mint family that has a square stem somewhat. And the leaves, as you can see from this image, are oppositely arranged, which means they grow opposite of each other. And the leaves can be ovate to lanceolate, so kind of elongated there. They have a pointy tip and sharply serrated margins. So that gives that toothed, experience, uh, toothed appearance to them. And the flowers are come right out of the leaf axle. So you can see the flowers are coming right where those leaves meet the stem. And as they mature, they'll become these green uh, seeds that are fruits that are also used for um, helping people with their energy levels and are also used to support kidney health. And you, there are different kinds of nettles out there. Uh, Urtica dioca is often talked about. It's probably the most common one out there. The nettles patches that grow, I have a couple of nettle patches near me actually. One has Urtica gracilis, which is a slender leafed nettle. And then I actually grow nettle in my garden. <laughs> and that one is Urtica dioca. Nettle is a host plant for many young insects. It um, ha will be the host for butterfly and moth caterpillars, beetle larvae, midge larvae. And there are two butterflies that are specifically associated with nettle that includes the red admiral and the question mark butterfly. And these tall, dense stands of nettle when it forms those big clumps can be used um, by so many different creatures, insects, birds, reptiles, amphibians, small mammals, they all can find shelter in those areas. So if you're lucky enough to have nettle near you, you can harvest it uh, fairly sustainably in that you can harvest it in a way that you can keep coming back to the same patch and it'll keep growing for you throughout the season and you can keep harvesting more. I can generally visit my nettle patch um, at least two, sometimes three times to get more nettle that's growing there. <clears throat> you definitely wanna harvest the leaves before the plant flowers and goes to seed. So we're just looking at these, the young nettle before they go to seed. And generally people like to wear gloves and long sleeves when they're harvesting their nettles. And some people don't because they like the nettle sting. So that's up to you. And basically you're looking for those top, you know, tender leaves of the nettle or the fresh growth. And as you see in this image there, what you wanna do is cut the stem right at the, what's called the leaf axle, right? Where the, the leaf stems are meeting the main stem there. And when you cut it there, what's gonna happen is there are these other little leaves there and they're gonna continue to grow. And so the plant's gonna just keep growing. Eventually, especially if that, I think if the plant is in a lot of sun, then it is just gonna go to seed. Um, you know, eventually it's gonna do that and we wanna let it do that, right? So it can complete its life cycle, but you can, as I mentioned, visit the plants a couple times before they do go to seed. Um, so yeah, that's how you harvest nettle. So bring scissors, bring gloves, bring a basket and harvest nettle. Uh, you, there are some lookalikes to nettle. Um, and so you wanna pay attention to that. As always, we wanna know that what we're harvesting is really what we're harvesting, right? So there's um, wood nettle, which is the Lapartia, the first uh, image there. 
that is actually edible. But, um, you know, you, again, you don't want to like just be harvesting things willy nilly, you want to know what it is. And then there's uh, false nettle, bo Bomeria cylindrica, and then there's clear weed, Pilea pomilla. That's a hard one to say, Pilea pomilla. So those are all some common look like. So you'll want to make sure, you know, that you're really good at harvest or identifying nettle and that you can really make sure that that's what you're harvesting. Other cautions in terms of harvesting nettle is that nettles can concentrate heavy metals and inorganic nitrates. So you want to make sure, as always, that you're harvesting from healthy soils. Nettle leaves and... Um, well, but the nettle leaves are super nourishing, as I've mentioned over and over, and they can be consumed or eaten in larger quantities. Think of it kind of like eating spinach or kale, and they can be cooked, uh, pulverized or dried prior to eating, and that eliminates their stinging hairs. I, what we do, so the reason why we're harvesting lots of nettle right now is we harvest the nettle and then we blanch the young leaves quickly in boiling water. Uh, and then we use some fresh to make into soups and that sort of thing. But we actually freeze a lot. We put them into vacuum sealed bags, freeze a lot because nettle in like January, February, when there's still lots of snow on the ground where I am, is really yummy. Um, so yeah, anywhere you would think of using spinach or kale, you can pretty much use nettle. So you can use them in lasagna, spanakopita, sag paneer, and on and on. And you can also use dried and powdered leaves in food as well. It has a slightly different texture, so, and you often want to rehydrate those first before you use them. You can also work with nettle as a tincture, which is an alcohol extract. And uh, there's some medicine making suggestions there in terms of ratio and alcohol percentage. Or you can easily find nettle tincture available at your local health food store. And nettle tincture um, is great, as I mentioned, for addressing blood sugar, all those studies looking how it benefits people with type 2 diabetes was using the nettle tincture. Seasonal allergies, people also use nettle tincture for seasonal allergies. But this is very important. Alcohol does not extract vitamins and minerals. So if you're thinking, I want to enjoy nettle as this nourishing herb and get all these nutrients, then the alcohol extract is not the way to go with that. Nettle tea is. So nettle tea, water is great at extracting vitamins and minerals. So if you're thinking I want a nutrient dense plant and I want to benefit from that beyond fresh nettle season, or maybe you don't have nettle growing fresh near you, then buying dried nettle and making it into a uh, nourishing herbal infusion is a wonderful way to go. And so to do that, you make, you get 20 grams or roughly an ounce uh, of the dried nettle leaves. And I recommend getting a kitchen scale to measure that out. But if you don't have a kitchen scale, this is approximately two cups of finely crumbled leaves. So you can see from the photo there, like we are not talking about a teaspoon of nettle, right? We're talking about a lot of nettle. One way of thinking about this is like, you know, you don't take a bite of a carrot and think like, I'm all good. <laughs> Instead, we have the whole carrot or a serving of carrots. Same thing with nettles. We want a lot of it to get all of those vitamins and minerals. And so nettle tea, you know, that I mentioned earlier, I've seen so many people begin to drink nettle tea and they just have all of these benefits they weren't even expecting in terms of just feeling overall great. And so highly recommend that. It, that can be a fun thing to do, like just start drinking nettle tea for a month and just see how you feel. And then as I mentioned, you know, people will drink the nettle tea for a long term as a preventative against uh, seasonal allergies. So I love stinging nettle so much. I'll just keep saying that over and over again. Uh, but I included it uh, in both of my books. So each book has a unique uh, recipes and take on stinging nettle. So there's things like stinging nettle frittata, stinging nettle soup. There's the, my lasagna recipe and duca, which is a super yummy um, hazelnut nettle blend. And if you don't already own these books, I know a lot of you already do, if you don't already own them, you can find them at your local bookstore. You can also order them in at your local library too. And then on Herb Mentor, we have so many wonderful nettle recipes. So I wanted to highlight some of those here for you. There's nettle spanakopita, so delicious. I know this is a favorite in the Gallagher household. 
Uh, this is a recipe of mine, singing nettle saute. This is, I love this, it's like the taste of spring to me. It's just a real simple recipe for uh, sauteing up some stinging nettles. You can make nettle beer. I was actually one of the first things I ever had of nettle and it makes a great beer. So nettle beer is super easy to make too. Nettle souffle, very fancy, very yummy. I'm just sharing the photos here, but when you log into Herb Mentor, you, know, you can find all of these recipes on there. So there's the dried nettle pasta. It's very impressive, very yummy. I think I'm just gonna keep saying very yummy over and over again because it is. Recipe there for nettle lasagna. Nettle shake is a way you can enjoy uh, nettles in a smoothie. And I think, whoops. <laughs> That's it. Nettle shake was the, the final. It was the last slide. You have to take yeah. your little uh, um, uh, thing back yeah. um, up so we can see you again or again. Thanks there. That was great. Great presentation. And um, I was I was already here to, to hold up Wild Remedies to say, you know, the place to learn a lot more about nettle. And of course, it's an alchemy of herbs as well. Rosalie mentioned um, Herb Mentor, and I'd like to point out, do you mind if I point out a couple things on Herb Mentor before we, um, before sure, we, uh, yeah, and that way you can rest your voice for a second if you want to, um, let's see if I can uh, do a screen share here, oops, so uh, let's see, I'm going to find the window, all right, cool, and I think that's sharing, hopefully, oops, has no, my Chrome so. lost its permission to share things, so we're not huh. going to bother with that, but I will, um, I'll do deal with that later. One of those live things that happen. But I will say that I suggest if you, because so many of you are um, on Herb Mentor and new to Herb Mentor, that if you go click on the herb section in the top right of your screen, you will see all of the plant monographs there and you can find one on Nettle there as well that you could just start reading right now. Um, and when Rosalie shows these recipes, you can just use a search bar, just type in Nettle and a lot of these recipes will come up. Uh, the plant walk section, you're going to have a lot of different herbalists giving their point of view on nettles. Um, and something, if you haven't wildcrafted yet, if you haven't done this, please check out um, a, a little mini course that Rosalie and Emily did on, it's in, um, in the dashboard section of Herb Mentor, mm -hmm. and it's called Wildcrafters Toolkit. And uh, they go through all of the basics that you need to know to go out while crafting. It's, 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 it's all of the, the main information. They get right to the point. It's not that long of a course. And it's, I totally suggest that you go through this and watch this before you um, go out and har while craft if, that's, if this is your first time doing it. Um, so Rosalie got a, some questions here coming up and one from Martha is, uh, making a tincture as a nettle absorbs alcohol, the top leaves are no longer covered. Do I keep adding alcohol or shaking the jar enough to keep the leaves from drying out? Yeah, good question, Martha. It's kind of, it's like both a simple and complicated question, uh, because so I, I really recommend making tinctures as the ratio method. And I think John prefers the folk method. So I'm not saying like my <laughs> way is the way, um, but I recommend that because then you know what you're getting. And so what I see with a lot of beginning herbalists and they're starting to make medicine, you know, they're, they're kind of unsure and they don't really know what's going on. And it's very easy to make super diluted tinctures. So when you buy a fresh nettle extract at the store, you're most likely getting a one to two ratio. Um, so that means, you know, it's a very potent extract. What I see with home herbalists is that they're often making like a one to 15 ratio or one to 20 ratio, or who knows <laughs> what their ratio is. Mm. So I really recommend that at first. I think once you get like more, you know, confident and knowledgeable and you just like understand the, the principles of how to make tinctures, then it's easier to kind of folk method it and like eyeball it and still have a very... Um, potent tincture, but until then, that's what I recommend. So I'm not knowing, you know, what you did um, in that situation. The other thing that I th think is a common mistake with making tinctures is people don't chop up their herbs fine enough. And I think, you know, you can do that with a knife, but I mean, you're really going to mince those herbs finely. So by the time you're done, you couldn't really tell what they were anymore. Uh, mm. I often put them like in a blender or food processor to get them like really really cut up into tiny, tiny pieces. All the time on social media, I see people sharing their tinctures that they made and it's like the flowers are still whole and the leaves are still whole and they look so beautiful, you know, like they are, it is beautiful. 
but when I see that, I'm like, wow, that's probably like a one to 30 ratio or mm -hmm. one to 50 ratio or something like that. So, um, so in terms of your question, like where you're at now with this preparation, I wouldn't like throw it out or anything. I don't mean to, you know, make it sound like it's bad by any means. Um, but what you could do is you could, um, take, take that from the jar and put it into like a blender or food processor and mix it up and see, you know, that if your leaves aren't that small, then it'll get them, um, smaller. And, um, so that could be one thing that would help sometimes putting it in a narrower jar can help as well. And then tamping it down, um, with something can also help. And it is good to keep things covered, but you could shake it every day. And then in the end, you just really want to press that out really well to make sure you're getting like, all, you know, all the goodness from there. Um, and you'll have a good yield as well. Mm. Yes. Do as Rosalie says, not as I do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know that there is like, you know, with hawthorn berries, I make gallons, literally gallons of hawthorn berry tincture every year. And like, I know it, like, I know it so well. Our ancestors weren't there with like beakers and, you know, kitchen scales and stuff. Mm. Right. They, but they knew it, right. They had, you know, like their elders showing them exactly how to make strong medicine. Um, and we don't always have someone like right there behind our shoulder. We're often like, you know, trying to figure it out on our own. So there just can be a, like a learning curve, I guess is mm -hmm. what I want to say. Mm -hmm. um, but that does remind me that in Herb Mentor, Herbal Basics, the course there is such a great place to get started with learning how to make herbal medicine. You get to see a video, you get handouts. So that if you haven't <laughs> done the Herbal Basics, See me with a much darker beard and more hair. <laughs> it was done a couple of years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Over a decade ago, actually. <laughs> um, hmm. So in case Rosalie showed some of those slides, you know, the, all those slides that were in there on Nettle and um, after this is over later, or if you want to watch a replay, wherever you're watching this right now, whether it's on Facebook or on YouTube, you could just go back and p pause on those slides and get more out of them um, later, just to point that out. Um, something you mentioned before, Rosalie, um, in there, you were talking about, you know, freezing the nettle uh, from the winter for the winter that you might um, put, uh, you know, in a, in a lasagna or something in January. Um, it just, just making sure, are you blanching? That yes. came to my mind. Yeah. yeah. Blanching them first, you know, mm -hmm. just don't put them in the freezer. You want to blanch them as you would broccoli or, or something else. And if you don't know how to do that. Just Google blanching uh, broccoli and then just do it for that. <laughs> something like that. Um, let's see. Uh, Rosanna, can you put raw, raw nettles in a smoothie? You can. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. And just going down the questions here. Um um, uh, how is freeze drying better? If how oh, a family member has a freeze dryer, I, well, freeze drying is just different. So I don't know that I would call anything better or worse, but mm -hmm. it's most often used for acute inflammation, like seasonal allergies. So if you want to mm -hmm. use it in that way, then you can. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Uh, could rubbing nettle aid neuropathy? It wouldn't surprise me. I can't say that I've tried that but it, yeah it wouldn't surprise me and of course you know neuropathy situations are going to be different for everyone for different reasons and different situations so that gets into a you know all that uh, sort of thing um so let's see um do, 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 do you fertilize nettle so i i have my own nettle patch in my garden um mm -hmm. i grow it in a very large container two actually it's like these two big frames and i put them in these frames that are kind of nestled into the earth a bit because those rhizomes will spread really well and i just want the nettle to be in its own special spot mm -hmm. um, but nettle loves nutrient dense soils or really rich soils so i do put compost on that every year because i want my nettles to be really strong and wonderful right and i don't want them to be like growing in depleted soils because then we have the problem that we have with a lot of like mm -hmm. monoculture foods today so yeah they definitely like to be nourished. I just, I don't use fertilizer in my own garden. I just use compost. Hmm. Very good. I'm not a master gardener. I feel like I should say that, <laughs> yeah. but I use compost and it seems to work really well. <laughs> <laughs> so Susie asks with all the warnings about foraging and so many lands are protected, I find it frustrating to know where to forage in the wild. Any recommendations? I live in Pacifica, California, which is in the Bay area. That is, that is frustrating and it is hard to know. And like, you know, I don't know what it's like there. So it's hard for me to know uh, as well. 
you could try contacting local agencies, you know, to see like, where is it allowed to harvest? Mm -hmm. um, for me, you know, like I have most of my foraging is done uh, in Washington state, both on the west side where John lives, uh, the coastal side and inland. I can say that all of the places I, where I've learned to harvest has been me getting out there. You know, it's just like I go hiking all the time. Um, and then I just and I often will try and like find things like I'll try and go out during the nettle season or whatever. Um, that's so I think it just it takes getting out there. It's hard to know like where to go. I think you have to go to find out where to go. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, it's part of the adventure. You know, it's yeah. part of the adventure of one wildcrafting. It's not necessarily something that's like, where do I go? I'm going to go there. I'm going to go get it. I'm going to harvest. I mean, part of the medicine is connecting to nature and spending time outside and discovering and the discovery process. And then um, say you find a patch of something and then it's like, you know, is this the best patch? You know, is this in a good spot? Is there like a larger patch right down the pathway? And you learn about your ecology. So your intention in wildcrafting isn't about you um, you know, getting some material to make medicine with. The process of wildcrafting and making your own medicine is really about you connecting to your environment and your ecology around you because that's the biggest part of the healing process, right? Not just like the chemical constituents and what's in it. So it's both. But yes, you can buy a bottle of tincture, but if you want to make your own, you're, you're really engaging in this process. And it's really, really important to have an ecological mindset Rosalie put in that slideshow, she put a lot about like ecological considerations and things like that. Like, you know, who else is eating nettles? Um, you have to think about all those things. And that's what's great about wild remedies. It takes it from that point of view. And there's no better mindset to start with when doing this because you'll avoid a lot of mistakes. <laughs> um, I'd say frustration too, you know, like the idea of like, I'm going to get to know the land where I live and I'm going to go mm -hmm. visit the land frequently and see what's there. Mm -hmm. just sets you up better, I think, than like, I need this one thing that I'm going to, you know, try to find that never shows up, you know, because that, that is definitely very frustrating. And somebody asked again, like, where are oh, they missed where on Herb Mentor that I said that information was as a little video course in the courses section called Wild Crafters Toolkit. And it's in there. You can't miss it. There's only like 10 dozen courses in there and you can't miss it. And, um, go through that because all this stuff that we're talking about is and that's part of it and it's that 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 little course is meant to be uh kind of a compendium to uh wild remedies um so you know to get that mindset of, of wild crafting because yeah, trip um shared some sorry i didn't mean to interrupt you there ahead. i was knowing trip shared some helpful information about um it may be allowed for personal use in most national forests, um, but checking with the BLM and USF uh, United States Forest Service, which is, um, yeah, it's good to you know just kind of know that. Also, one of so one of my new favorite harvesting places for nettle I've only found it in the past couple of years is on an old homestead where I live, and mm. it just came about because I was mentioning to people that I really love nettles and I was growing nettles in my garden. They were like, "Oh, we have big patches of nettles just right down the lane." And so that's how I found that one is just like, you know, chatting about it. And, and so now I get to go, you know, they have a, incredible patches that I get to go. So yeah, talk to people, mention it, you know, put it out there basically and, and, um, and see what you find. When your eye is, starts to train itself, it's like, I don't know, like one example I'm thinking is, I don't know if anyone has learned to uh, learn photography, for example, and you start to learn photography and you go out and you take pictures and all of a sudden everything you're starting to see good pictures, you know, good photographs and everything. And you want to take all these photos because your eye is being trained in that. It's very similar. It's like with every plan you want to learn about, you start to like start to develop that eye. Like where is nettles? Where, where does it grow? Where's it like to grow? And you're in, the, in its habitat and then you're finding it and you see it in one, and then, then, then it's amazing. Then you can start seeing it everywhere. You know, and then um, and then you find your favorite little patches. And and what's cool about nettles is like every plant's different on how you're um, gathering. But what's cool about nettles is you can tend a patch. So you find a patch that's somewhere, you know, not maybe if, if you're lucky enough, not too far from your house that you can go and check on regularly and, and keep that tended. And you can keep cutting it back in the spring and keep them, you know, you can get more out of it and get um you know, the, the, the tender plants coming up before they get too tough and old. So it's something to think about too. Yeah. Um, let's see. 
let's see what other questions we have here. Um, okay. Oh, can you use older? I see. I got an older. I just saw it. The older leaf question. But uh, can you use older leaf for tinctures, basically? That's this. I just thought you'd address older using older leaves. That's why. Yeah. Um, do you want to? <laughs> sorry. Yeah, sorry. I was, I was there you go. Was Here it is. I was okay. For tinctures, can you use older leaves? Oh. There you go. I was looking for it and I was just kind of. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sorry. Um, generally, this is just like a general rule of thumb with plant medicine is that we want to use the plant part when it's it's most vibrant because that means that's where the plant is putting all of its energy. So, for example, um, you know, if something is fruiting, we don't often use the leaves because we know that the, the plant is now putting all of its energy into the fruits. So we harvest the fruits. Um, so I would say that it'd really be better to harvest the, the uh, leaves when they look vibrant and young and, and that they're at their peak. Because if you're going to go through the process of connecting with that plant, harvesting that plant, making medicine with that plant, you want to know that what you have is going to be the good stuff, right? Um, so that would be my recommendation on that. Mm. In terms of, you know, there is some concern that once the plant goes to flower and seed, that there's some different constituents that develop in the leaves that can be harsh on the kidneys. This hasn't been like super well sort of or well verified. So there's some kind of like wishy-washy, but you know, I was taught not to harvest after flowering. That's what many people were taught because of this situation. And those, the idea is that if you eat those leaves, then those older leaves that has stuff that can be harsh on the kidneys. So, um, yeah, so I, I just, I would prefer not to, <laughs> this is my yeah. way of answering that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then if you miss the leaves, you know, if you miss the leaves and there's, and there's just older leaves there and then you'll know where to go next year. You'll know where to go next spring and you'll be so excited when those nettles start to pop up and you'll be like, yay. Um, so we got, uh, can you use nettle seeds medicinally? Speaking of, you know, we have our leaves that are getting tough mm -hmm. and they're flowering mm -hmm. and then yeah. fall's going to come and their seeds are going to be there. Yeah. Yeah. So it'll go to flower and you want to let them just do their things as flowers. And then eventually they'll form these clumps. They're kind of these like cascading clumps of these green fruits. Um, and yes, you can harvest those and, those are used both for increasing energy levels, supporting healthy energy levels. So it's not like caffeine uh, or coffee, where it's like a stimulant necessarily. It seemed to be kind of nourishing um, your energy levels. And then it's famously used to nourish the kidneys, which is just kind of interesting that the older leaves are said to harm the kidneys and that the, le or the seeds uh, nourish the kidneys. And there's some interesting case studies out there. I think uh, I'm most likely cite them in the monograph that you can find uh, that are in the herb section on Herb Mentor. Uh, but people are clinical herbalists use them for people who have like serious kidney issues, like on dialysis, and have seen great results using nettle seeds for that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, there's probably not a lot of people on this call that have dialysis, so that's kind of like a, a very specific use. But you could just use the like those seeds are very nourishing. You don't need to have a health issue in order to use them. Like you could harvest them and just like sprinkle them on your morning oatmeal or something like that. Or um, you can make a seasoning salt blend with nettle seeds in it. That's fun too. So you could just, you know, add them to your diet as just like a health maintenance and connection with nettle time. Hmm. Hmm. Speaking of seeds, we're on seeds. Uh, could, uh, can you sow the wild nettle seed? Because you mentioned you have... Mm -hmm. uh, nettles in your garden did you just do that um so i got my nettles from two places one a friend gave me a couple clumps and mm. i remember you know we were in her garden and she just like roughly dug them up it wasn't even like you know she just kind of like with a hoary knife and just handed me some clumps and i planted those and those took out great and then a friend did he grew flats of nettles uh, he's a farmer and he grew flats of them from seed and he ended up giving me a flat. And so I planted a lot of those too. Mm. So it is possible. I just haven't done it. Um, and I have to admit that my farmer friend is somewhat of a seed whisperer, I think, when it comes to <laughs> sprouting seeds. So I don't know how easy it is. It could be easy or not. I don't know. But it's possible. Hmm. There were a couple of questions about animals. Um, people use feed nettles to animals, right? Supplement? Yeah. Actually, um, I was just reading about 
feeding uh, nettles to chickens. So mm. I'm actually going to start doing that. I'm going to use the dried nettle that I use all of the nettle that I harvest. I use fresh because that's just like what I want to do with it. And then I buy my dried stinging nettle from mountain reserves. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take the state, the same dried stinging nettle that I use in my teas. I'm going to start putting that in my chicken feed. Mm. That is all the experience I have with nettles and animals though. I don't have a lot of experience in that realm, but uh, I don't know of any problems, you know, like it's such a nourishing plant. So I think I do. I do want to mention well uh, everybody, uh, cause there were a couple more adventure questions that if you, um, I just, Put this up here for everybody. Um, if you, oh, that's not, that's me. That's the wrong person. That's me. <laughs> uh, so if you're not an herb mentor member yet and you're watching this, because we're, you know, we let, we let herb mentor folks know days ahead of time or a couple days ago as well as today that this is happening and, and uh, we notify everybody um, for the members and you might be just came across this, for example, on Facebook. And if you'd like to check out herb mentor, you can go to herbmentor.com and uh, today I have a little coupon, $10 off an annual membership check out our eventer.com and just use the coupon code nettle, which is valid for today <laughs> to make it easy for you. So you can go check that out. Um, you can also link over there from learning herbs, but just wanted to put that up in case that uh, you're wondering what is this herb mentor thing? And you just came across this on your feed or on YouTube or something like that. Um, and let's see, I don't know, back to questions. Uh, this is an interesting question about dyeing Cause I know you've done some things with dyes, plant dyes. Um, so I don't know about nettle, uh, if the yeah. form of acid or do you know anything about that? Or is it just, uh, yeah, I don't know that? anything about that. Oh, Unfortunately, okay. I've never, never died with nettle. Hmm. There was a couple of, um, and thanks Susie again for bringing up your question. Cause sometimes these questions, um, you know, get lost in the feed above. And if I'm going past your question, you know, just put it in there again, because then I can uh, see. But thanks for doing that. Oh, that was the wrong one. Um, <laughs> Sister Susie, does Chinese uh, Eastern medicine agree with the information you have shared about nettles? So she's asking about energetics and nettles. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Thanks, Susie. Yeah. It's been a long time since I've looked up nettle from a TCM perspective, but it's so pronounced. Like oftentimes I find that when we com compare the energetics between different traditions, it's that either they agree because it's so obvious or they agree, but they have totally different perspectives on why that might be. Uh, but nettle, you know, it is so drying. That is just like, you know, the most common thing I hear about nettle mm -hmm. is like, oh, it's so drying. It made my skin dry. My mouth's always dry when I drink nettle, et cetera. And that's just this, such a common thing that I think that's going to be felt on all the different systems or um, practices out there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been a long time since I've looked up singing that all specifically for that. It's definitely cooling. Yeah, so definitely cooling. Cools us down. So I, I think in nettles and going in that moist forest, you know, I get that cooling feeling versus uh, hot or spicy. Um, can you use a food dehydrator to dry the leaves? Yes, you there can. You and um, if you live in a humid environment, that's definitely the way to go. I live in a super dry climate, so I never use a dehydrator. But, but I have like, to just about everything. Yeah, but John has to. So yeah. If I have one of those big box dehydrators that I got years ago. Uh, which is kind of funny, John, because whenever I come to visit you, I'm like, oh, it's so humid over here. And you're like, no, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> I got them from the East Coast where in the summer it's really humid. <laughs> but if you have to use a food dehydrator, I'm telling you, it's humid. <laughs> I have to use a dehydrator. That's where we're well, drawing the you line. You grew right up there. in desert, uh, desert lands and dry yeah. places, and you live in dry places. So that's been your life. So it's yeah, I know. <laughs> <Definitely. dry. laughs> I've never lived in a dry climate before. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, I mean, I have a hard time visiting them. I go somewhere like Colorado or Arizona for just like a few days and a few days in, I'm just like, oh my God, and I'm drinking coconut water every day, anything I can get. Um, there was a question here. We were talking about seeds before. Karen was uh, wondering uh, how and when do you harvest the seeds? Uh, so you want to harvest them once they fully developed. So they'll be noticeably green. Again, they look like these like tiny green I want to say pebble, but they're much smaller than a pebble. But um, so you'd want them to be ripe. And then I just harvest with the gloves on because you can still get stung and you can just kind of reach into those um, leaf axles where they are and just kind of take them down. And um, a lot of people harvest into a 
paper bag. You can't put these in a basket, in other words, right? Because they'll just fall out um, of your basket. So put them in a paper bag, let them dry if you like, or, you know, use some while they're fresh. Mm. Mm. This will, I mean, it just depends on where you live when they're going to have seeds. Um, so that, yeah, that, that can vary. We're thinking later in the season, you know, July, August, mm. September kind of thing. Another timing question. Uh, let's say uh, if, ne if cutting nettle to ground is new growth safe, even through the summer, can we harvest and, and cut and come again? Mm -hmm. So I never harvest to the ground. Like I always leave several layers of leaves because that lets the plant continue yeah. to get. I go through two bracts down usually. Yeah, there's two bracts down. Yeah. So yeah. you don't want to harvest all the way to the ground, first of all, mm -hmm. but then you can you know, come back and keep visiting and tending that to that same patch. And it's sort of like in your garden, you know, you're growing lettuce or kale, like you can, you can keep harvesting it, but at some point it's just going to want to bolt. <laughs> yeah. At some point it's just like, okay, I'm done with this. <laughs> I'm, done, I'm done with you harvesting me. Yeah. <laughs> um, are the uh, nettles with purplish leaves safe to use? I, I imagine you're talking with the super young, just coming out of the ground. Yeah, I, I assume so. Again, you want them old enough that you can leave leaves behind. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes, I don't know what causes this, but I've had this happen where it's like I harvest the nettles and they sit for a little while before I, you know, start to work with them and they get purple in that process. I've, I'm still here. <laughs> I still eat them. Doing okay. <laughs> what are you? No. <laughs> 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 I wouldn't blame nettle if that's not the case. <laughs> Laura Lee, uh, I have very dry skin. And does that mean I shouldn't take nettles? That's a really good question. So for me, I think that, well, there's all these different aspects, you know, like um, one, if we think about dry skin, you know, it could be like, is that a climate thing? Is that an internal um, hydration thing? Is it a not getting enough healthy fats thing? So it could be all these reasons contributing to it. It could be a constitutional thing of like, just you tend to have drier skin, um, which is totally fine. I like if for all of you who know me, and those of you who don't, I'll just inform you now, I love herbal energetics. I love knowing that, you know, plant is drying or cooling or warming. And I love seeing how we can match herbs to the person to see how we can get the most benefit. And that's because when I first started practicing herbs, with herbs, I didn't know about that. And I learned more from this Western tradition that was just kind of like, you know, do you have eczema? Use burdock. And it was just kind of this like, use this for that kind of thing. And I noticed that sometimes that worked and sometimes that didn't work. And um, as I started working with clients, when it didn't work, it was really starting to bug me. And I wanted to know like, how, how can I, you know, be better at this and have better results more of the time? And that's when herbal energetics found me and I went to Chinese medicine school. I studied Ayurveda and I just went into this deep dive of herbal energetics, studied a lot with um, Jim McDonald, who's really big into Western herbalism energetics. And so I just, you know, immersed myself in all of that. And I think that it is so fascinating. I call upon that all the time with me, uh, you know, when I'm thinking about matching herbs to people. But where I kind of draw the line, though, is that if you're interested in herbs and you're learning about herbs and you want it, like if you're like me and you're obsessive about herbs and you want to learn everything there is, I wouldn't say ever to not try an herb because it has different energetics than what you're looking for. Because the worst case scenario in this situation is that you might have, you know, dry skin, Lorley, and then you take nettle and then you have more dryness. But it's, that's not like the end of the world, right? Like you'll just have some dryness and then you'll have that experience of nettle. You'll be like, oh yeah, I was dry and I took my nettle and then I was drier. Um, one of my very best friends, she is super dry and she cannot have nettle tea, but she can eat nettles just fine. That doesn't have the same effect on her. So there's like mm. these different levels of knowing, you know, how different preparations might work for you. So, you know, obviously if you have like, an anaphylactic reaction to something, I'm not going to be like, oh, just try it. See how it goes. <laughs> right. That's not what I'm saying. But I would never say like, don't try something. You know, like if you tend to be warm, you know, it's not like I would say like, oh, well, you should never have ginger, you know, never experience ginger because you are already warm. Like, no, that's no fun. Right. <laughs> we want to, we want to try all the herbs and experience all the herbs, have our own relationship to them, know how we can, for, you know, maybe with time, you're like, Oh, nettle's too drying for me. But if I add 
marshmallow root to my nettle infusion, then it's not drying or I can have fresh nettle or, you know, whatever the case might be. It's all about, you know, like if you're called to an herb, try it, try it in a lot of different ways, see how you react to it. Um, again, if it's a serious reaction that's super uncomfortable, don't keep going back to that plant. But don't, you know, I don't, I would never want someone to be afraid of like, you know, not quite matching their energetics hmm. and then saying like, I'm not going to try this. Yeah, try you know, and, and Susie, Susie uh, writes here, it seems like you have to know so much more than the basic info of how to make medicine before actually using it. And when I see a question like that, that's that's a little bit of a danger because because, you know, you're going to learn about a plant over time the more you use it. However, you don't want to get yourself psyched out, um, you know, so much so that you, you're, you have to feel like you need to be prepared to the point when you, you can harvest and use this plant. I mean, that's the reason why when Rosalie like wrote her books, like in Wild Remedies or Alchemy of Herbs, is that if you are certain that you've identified stinging nettle and read about it, you know, you can harvest some and make it make one of these recipes, try making the soup and whatnot. And and because it's those experiences are going to give you a little more confidence, going to give you more reason and excitement to go out and do more. If you keep it all in your head all the time, like am I ready? Am I, is this is my energetic writers, this or that, you're never gonna, you're never gonna go out and do it. And the point of learning herbs in the beginning, you know, 16 years ago, we started this, is to the point is just like go out and make this and go out out and do this. You don't need a lot of information. You don't need a lot of courses. You don't need this. You just need some simple information to go out and get started. Um, and so just to be careful and, and, and know you have good resources. And that's what Learning Herbs has been here this whole time for. And now Rosalie has her wonderful books that I believe are the two best herbal books out there. So I think everyone should have it on their bookshelves. <laughs> and so, uh, um, you know, I don't know if I'm just being biased, but no, I actually, you know, it was very, we, these are very carefully written and they're well-researched. Uh, scientific sightings, everything, if you can trust it. So any books, things you're getting, resources, you have to make sure that you're, you know, if you're learning from an, you feel an herbalist that has been, you know, out there knows their stuff and actually is using the plants. That's really, really important. Um, so I just wanted to kind of put that out there because I just don't want people to think to get too psyched out. Um, so it kind of reminds me too, John, we mm -hmm. have, um, we had some similar herb teachers when we were learning, but we had different herb teachers too. But one thing that was common for both of us is that our teachers accentuated learning a plant at a time. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I don't, I can't say that I strictly followed that. I was like, okay, I'm only going to learn about nettles and I'm not going to think yeah. about anything else, you know, but <laughs> there is something to be said for saying like, you know, this week or this month, I'm just really going to focus on getting to know this one plant and yeah. we can get to know plants by reading about them. But, and, and that's an important part, right? That's because that's how we, you know, get a lot of information these days. And we can watch videos and do other kind of like passive ways of taking in information, but spending time with the plant, if possible, there's so much to learn there. But like John said, it really is about the doing. And yeah, the more we just passively take in the information, but we're not like actually doing something. One, I just think it's kind of boring. That's just my, my take on it. It's kind of boring, but also, you know, you're really going to learn once you put, um, you know, the, the practice of it in. So right. That's but I think point. herbs can be overwhelming if we think like, oh my gosh, there's so much to learn about nettle and I need to know all of it right now. You know, like I've been, you know, I was telling John, it's like, we've been sharing and teaching about nettle for 16 years. I'm still learning more about nettle. And oh. um, yeah, so th that there's always more to learn. Um, but there's also, I don't know, just when we focus on one herb instead of all the herbs, it's easier to have that deeper relationship and you get to keep coming back and learning more. And, and it's not just about like what's in the books or what, what's on Herb Mentor or what's whatever. It's about your own personal experiences. So let's say what Rosalie said, you want to focus on an herb a month. And that's not a bad idea going through the seasons, you know, like when, when, when it's spring, it's like, oh, it's, you know, chickweeds up or, in the, or there's calendula flowers in the summer or a marshmallow root. And the, then you can really, really learn about some different plants every year in that monthly track. 
But if you take also on another layer on top of that and take maybe one plant that you really look at through the whole season, because sometimes people just pay attention to the nettles that are coming up in the spring when you're harvesting it. But what about what it looks like in the summer and what the flowers look like and when it goes to seed and after it goes to seed and what it looks like there in the winter? There's so much more to be learned. And those are experiences and things you're going to learn that aren't in any books. And when you have more of those personal experiences, then you have this place for the information to stick on in your brain, like you've had the, all these personal experiences and your walks and things like that. And then you learn more in a book and it's like, oh yeah, I saw that, I get that. And then it's a place for you to remember because it's not about memorizing facts or whatever. It's, all of this is about your own relationship with the plant. That's what this whole thing is about. You know, not about learning a bunch of things from a book and getting a PhD on it. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm doing that with mugwort this year. I'm following mugwort through the seasons. And mm. it's a plant that I've long admired, but I haven't worked with a lot. And I'm actually consciously trying not to read a lot about it. I will eventually, but I'm really just focusing on like watching it through the season. So mm. um, yeah, it's that's like something we can commit to every single year, you know, spending time with one plant throughout the year. Mm. It's a wonderful like foundational activity, but one that I think whether you've been, you know, with playing with herbs for a year or 20 years or 40 years, it's something we can all benefit from. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, let's see here. Well, anyway, where are we? Uh, there was a question about dandelion um, and dandelion root and nettles. And oh, yeah. Is nettle good to mix with uh, dandelion as a tea? I just think about that. The thing is, both of those are super strong diuretics. So if yeah. I was going to mix those two together, it'd probably be like for medicine. I, right? just, have, I like, just have to pee thinking about that. Yeah. <laughs> so there's that. But, you know, somebody was mentioning nettle pesto earlier. And like, I just made um, nettle dandelion pesto quite good. So I wouldn't necessarily say you couldn't ever mix those two together. The other thing is that nettle tea is often combined or often made as this nourishing herbal infusion is what we call it. And that's where, as I showed in the slides, you're taking like this much nettle and you're steeping it for four hours. Dandelion leaves can be awfully bitter. They can be wonderfully bitter too. Um, but when you, you know, if you put them in a tea and steep them for four to eight hours, they might be like, it might not be a very fun tea to drink. But if you take some nice fresh nettles and some nice fresh dandelion leaves in the spring and put them in a stir fry there you go yeah. <laughs> yeah or dandelion leaves in your salad and then nettle leaves in your stir whatever all kinds of ways so um dandelion flowers so fast can you still use the dandelion leaves after they flower yeah candace you can just give them a taste because as i mentioned dandelion could be awfully bitter or wonderfully bitter and chances are they're going to be a more pleasing bitter taste before they flower and go to seed and earlier but there's times when I've tasted dandelion leaves after it's gone to flower and seed and it's been fine so it kind of depends on how hard that dandelion is struggling like I noticed the dandelions that grow in my raised buds which are in these like nutrient-dense soils that are getting watered frequently those ones you know tend to be pretty palatable versus like the dandelions that are in my, you know, unfrequently watered lawn that are like struggling to survive, those ones are, tend to be really bitter even before they flower. So there's really like no, there's kind of some generalities, but there's no set point there. So yeah, give it a, make sure you are definitely working with dandelion and then give a little nibble and see what you think. Hmm. I hope everyone's uh, reading these uh, comments as they're going. Um, Unfortunately, like I can see comments coming and Rosalie can see comments coming in from both Facebook and YouTube, but the people on Facebook can't see the YouTubers comments and the YouTubers oh, comments really? oh, and the Facebook see. comments. So, <laughs> but we like to broadcast that on both because some people don't have, like people don't have Facebook. I don't use Facebook. So like I appreciate like uh, um, having those other other places. Um, so yeah, it looks like we're kind of getting down towards the end here. If anyone has a question or two, we can probably fit another question or two in. Um, and let's see. I think that's uh, good. Yeah. Yeah. So um, Rosalie, what have you been working on? Do you have anything new that might be coming out real soon that we should know about? <laughs> Um, well, gosh, I've, I have like a lot of things cooking Tell right now. Tell me about <laughs> some of your projects. That All right. Been yeah. Doing. Well, I, um, I did start a YouTube channel just over a month ago and I already have 
two videos about nettles because that's how awesome they are. And just today I released a video about hawthorn, which I think for a lot of people, hawthorn might be blooming right now because I did see some questions go by about hawthorn. So if you go to YouTube and look for Herbs with Rosalie, you'll find my hawthorn video. And next week, I think I'm pretty sure this is maybe I shouldn't say this, but I already mentioned it. So I will. I'm pretty sure my podcast is going to drop next week. So the what's first it called? One, it's called Herbs with Rosalie. Great name. Yeah. I'm just keeping it constant. <laughs> and I'm really looking forward. Some my podcast will be some solo shows, but I'm going to be interviewing herbalists in what I think is going to be a very interesting format. And I might as well just share here that my first interview is going to be with none other than Rosemary Gladstar. All um, right. So yeah, very much looking forward to that. Hey, you're not interviewing me? Not the first one, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, I, I feel like my life has been so rosemary lately because that awesome webinar that um, you did. Yeah, I started watching that right before dinner and it was well over an hour. I like watched it an hour before dinner and then it was like time to have dinner and I couldn't turn it off because I didn't know if I was going to be able to watch it, you know, like if I could go back to where I stopped. And so Xavier and I, my husband, we just sat at the table and I just had my phone there and we just ate dinner and listened <laughs> and kind of listened, watched because it was so good. Um, yeah. Thank and I you. have a new course coming out, but I think that's, you know, coming out in a bit. So we'll talk about that maybe like next time we do urban. Yeah. Tour. Next time we're going to do uh, one of these urban mentor lives, I think in late June, and we're going to talk about some other things that you're working on. And mm -hmm. I'm excited because I, I, my, I podcasted for eight years on urban mentor at urban mentor radio. And then I stopped podcasting and then podcasting got really big. Yeah, um, <laughs> you were definitely really an busy. early adopter to podcast. I was really busy on some other projects and stuff, but um, I'm formulating, and uh, we'll be we'll be back maybe this summer, fall with with one as well, and um, be a little different from Rosalie's. But I'm sure we'll uh, cross pollinate and interview mm -hmm. each other and <laughs> do things like that. It'll be fun. Um, so, uh, and everybody, if you missed before, uh, so this. This will just be on YouTube or Facebook, wherever you're watching it, and you can watch us again um, if you want to, or if you didn't, you know, did miss the beginning, you can go back and watch the beginning. And just to, again, if you are found out about Herb Mentor today and you'd like to go to herbmentor.com, you can do that and get ten dollars off an annual membership, and it's an amazing amount of courses and things that you can get. Um, you know, Herb Mentor has. Uh, her, all of Rosalie's tons of her amazing digital monographs has a forum for uh, support to ask questions, to share wins, um, and also fantastic courses, like a dozen or so amazing courses, all kinds, video ones, podcast kinds, and just on all kinds of topics from wildcrafting to uh, Rosalie and I did one on learning the plants of your area. Um, and, 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 and Rosalie mentioned um, Jim McDonald before and energetics and Jim McDonald is a 10 part, course on energetics called foundational herb craft that's on herb mentor that you can listen to or watch as well as uh larkin bunce has a great one mm -hmm. on um on five phases which goes over um some chinese medicine um aspects to that are really practical that you can use following and getting connected to the seasons and um some ayurvedic based practical courses um, in, uh, in food as medicine type of things. There's two food as medicine type courses on there, which were, are very different, but, um, also really wonderful to watch. So I just wanted to make sure that everyone knew about those things. And if you're new to our mentor, welcome. And I hope you take advantage of all these things. And, um, so, uh, Carol was asking about the interview with Rosemary. That's a podcast, uh, Rose, Rose, Rose Lee's that'll be coming out soon. And, um, what I would do is go to herbswithrosalie.com, dot org. What is it? dot mm -hmm. com. Herbswithrosalie dot com. Yeah, and you get on Rose uh, Rosalie's email list, like you're on the, the Learning Herbs email list. You get on Rosalie's email list, and she will email you, and you will know all about it. She'll give you all <laughs> the details, and you um, and you definitely want to um, definitely want to be on that list and listen to that podcast because I think it's going to be awesome. Um, and Rosalie, do you have anything you want to say before we head off for the day? Oh, well, put you on the spot. What was that? Yeah, put Better me on put the spot. On the spot. 
Yeah, I, you know, lately I've just, I love this time of year so much because everything, you know, for where I live, um, I live in zone four. So we have lots of snow in the winter, the snow melts in March. And then there's kind of this like lull that all of a sudden, like April, May, everything is just like whew, explodes. And there's so many plants out there. And um, whether you live in the Northern hemisphere or maybe some folks coming in from the Southern, um, there's, there's just so many plants out there. So I think if you, you know, took away one thing, maybe two things from this presentation, it could be um, nettles are awesome and they're definitely worth knowing about. And two, get to know a plant that lives near you and spend time with that plant, visit it, uh, watch it through the seasons as we've been recommending and, um, and get to know it on this totally different level. Um, you know, spend time with it, draw it, color it, make tea with it, all of those things. And that is just a wonderful practice that will, will bring you so much more knowledge than, than reading about it will. So uh, if, you, if that sounds like something that's like, oh, that sounds inspiring to me, then like, you know, go out now, go find your plant, see what speaks to you. Mm, thank you so much. And thanks to you to everyone who joined us here today. Thanks to all the Urban Answer members. Thank you, Rosalie, for sharing about nettles and answering all those questions. It's been wonderful. We will be back here again and again and again. You never know when. We just kind of, we like to just be inspired. We do what we want to do it. And that's what keeps it fun for us and keeps it interesting for you. Um, but we will be back here again. We know for sure, actually, in, in, in uh, late uh, June. And you'll know when because you're an Urbenter member. Urbenter.com and we'll email you when. And there'll be something new and special we'll learn about then. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining us today. And we'll see you next time. See you later. Bye, everyone.